in LA this week. It's super convenient, super attractive with great views. Please come out and vote. If it's more convenient to vote somewhere you live, please do that. Just get out and vote. What they're doing is they're leaving us out. So it's really important to count us all in, at, you know, so that we can get the services that we need. So we really, you know, come together to see how we could help our communities, just even in, in a mural like this. Hello, everyone. I'm Natalia Bilbao. Here's what's happening in LA this week. The clock is quickly winding down in the collection phase of the 2020 census. Currently, Los Angeles residents are critically undercounted. That's why the mayor's census initiative team will continue to be out in full force, racing to reach as many folks as possible for this once in a decade count. A lot of the areas that we're targeting that are low responding are schools that are Title I schools. They need more funding. They get funding from the federal government and we, they use the census count to get that funding. So that's what's very important. It, it will de determine how much money we're going to receive for early education, our uh, homeless initiatives that we have, and for more housing as well. So whoever's not signing up for the census, what they're doing is they're leaving us out. So it's really important to count us all in, you know, so that we can get the services that we need. I just want to say that filling out the census is so important. All of us need to be counted. And I know there's a lot of speculation, you know, that maybe you do not want to give your personal information and you do not have to. If the census comes to your house and you say, can you register me as A, B, and C, they will do that. They will mainly ask you, you know, how many people are in your house, the ages, and that's practically it. I do want to assure the public that due to the census does have strict rules on sharing the data with other departments. They cannot share that data at all. They're not asking for anything too personal, like your social security number. They're not asking for any tax information. Los que queremos invitar a la comunidad que vengan a llenar el censo, vamos a tener estos eventos alrededor de todos Los Ángeles. Y no es bien fácil de venir, tenemos agentes del, de, del Bureau del Census que pueden hablar, en, hablan, hablan en español, no que pueden, pueden hablar en español y pueden llenar el censo con ellos y es bien fácil. Local governments have been grappling with the federal government over a fluctuating end date for the 2020 census. So don't wait. If you haven't already, get counted. Visit my2020census.gov or call 844-330-2020. And the census isn't the only national event complicated by the COVID-19 pandemic. In-person voting for the general election in November currently comes with some public health risks. Fortunately, the city of Los Angeles is taking measures to make sure in-person voting actually can be done safely. And it's making for some pretty creative polling locations. Take a look. Bueno, estamos aquí con un anuncio bastante importante y bastante alegre que Dodger Stadium va a ser un sitio de votación para esta elección en noviembre. Just like we were happy to provide the space for the largest COVID testing center in the United States. It's what the Dodgers do. We're such an important part of this community because the community has been so good to us. It's super convenient, super attractive, with great views in 360 degrees. So we hope this works for people. And if it does, please come out and vote. If it's more convenient to vote somewhere you live, please do that. Just get out and vote. All the public health guidelines that are recommended or mandated will be incorporated into the in-person voting experience. Bring your mask, right? Bring your mask. Uh, and uh, anticipate the signage calling for physical distancing. 
all the Dodger fans out there, we know that this is an extremely important election. Uh, so many issues, not just candidates, but so many issues on the ballot. It's important that your voice is heard in this election. And what better way to do it than from the inspiring Chavez Ravine. Even as we get a handle on keeping safe and smart during the COVID-19 pandemic, the flu season is once again upon us. It's been proven that getting your flu shot helps you stave off the yearly bug. And in one YMCA in Boyle Heights, flu shots are even free. So you've got no excuse now. The YMCA here in Boyle Heights is a beacon of the community since the pandemic hit in March. And so a lot of the community members uh, look at the YMCA as a safe haven for a lot of their support. So it's important that we continue to do that and provide the resources to our communities. The flu shot is a great resource to use to make sure that you can keep yourself safe, your family safe, and be able to sort of work and contribute to the community around you especially important this year because we are all experiencing COVID and the risks of that. And you want to make sure that you don't get this respiratory disease in, in your lungs as well while you're trying to avoid the other one. It's an inactive vaccine, which means we are not actually injecting any live virus or anything into you. So you should not be at risk at getting the flu at all. Normally around a certain time I would get sick, but since I started taking the shot, I felt like I haven't been I haven't been getting sick. No, no, sin nada. Es como algo como un piquete de mosco. Pero yo se les recomiendo que vengan. Por eso es es por la salud de la de la persona. We want to make sure that folks get their flu vaccination, which is absolutely free, not charging one single penny. Uh, the good folks here at the YMCA uh, who have been just incredibly stalwarts here in Boyle Heights. Please get the flu shot. Anyone who can get the flu shot, do that to keep yourself safe and your family safe and your community safe. Thank you. Council member Curran Price invited Channel 35 on a tour of the Rise Apartments in South Los Angeles. This housing project is the latest step in making sure no family or veteran goes unhoused. And we're here on 40th and Figueroa in an exciting residential housing complex being created by High Ridge Costa, uh, SRO Housing, uh, and RIMES. It's a exciting project that will house uh, 56 uh, homeless individuals, uh, 40 of whom will be veterans uh, who've been experienced homelessness. The community itself will have service providers from the Vets Administration and will have also a social service provider through our nonprofit general partner, SRO Housing. And then as the property manager, the services for all the residents will be provided to help them settle into their new homes. All 56 units will be fully furnished. SRO is an affordable housing developer and service provider. We provide affordable housing to homeless and low-income individuals, primarily in Skid Row. So this is our first project outside of the Skid Row boundaries. You can go to our website, which is www.srohousing.org, and they can find out about all of our housing and our services. We provide over 2,200 units of housing, and we have 30 properties. It's going to really become a community right here uh, on 40th uh, and Figueroa. Rise Apartments plans to move in their first residence in time for the November holidays. With so many families against the ropes this year, it's easy to forget that our first responders, the folks we count on for help in a time of crisis, are having a hard time of it as well, especially in the arena of mental health. That's why Council President Nuri Martinez was joined by California Secretary of State Alex Padilla, LAFD Chief Ralph Terrazas and the United Firefighters of Los Angeles City to officially open the new Youth Lock LAFD Center for Health and Wellness. Take a look. One, two, I have the pleasure of welcoming you to the ribbon cutting for the LAFD Youth Lock 
Center for Health and Wellness here in the old fire station number seven. This is such a significant way to say yes, we do support firefighters. Uh, we praise them for their courage, we praise them for their service, uh, but they're human beings too. Uh, they each have a story to tell, a personal life journey, a family experience, uh, a, an experience sometimes traumatic in, in the line of duty that every once in a while they'll need help. This is huge. Uh, this makes a statement. Behavioral health and firefighter behavioral health is important and we have resources and it's got top-down support. We want our members to get the help that they need. Our firefighters experience terrible things, terrible things, that they can't share with their families because it's just gonna uh, depress their families, to be honest with you. So it is a great day for the LAFD, but let me explain why. A little over six years ago when I was appointed fire chief, I realized right away that we needed to do something more in the area of behavioral health. Last year, just a, a statistic to think about, last year, calendar year 2019 across the country, more firefighters were lost due to suicide than line of duty deaths. Think about that. And there's nothing better than having someone that knows your situation and can help walk you through the journey of recovery. The FTC warns, beware of fake texts while shopping online. Theme parks want the green light from Governor Newsom, and LA Comic Con is planning an in-person event this year. These stories up next on City Beat. During the pandemic, online shopping has been the go-to source for getting what you need during the stay-at-home orders. Unfortunately, with that comes scams and a new one identified by the Federal Trade Commission. This phishing scam will claim to be from the United States Postal Service and be about the shipping of an item, which will be followed by a link. At the link, it will try to get your personal information as well as lead to malware. Remember, you should always call shippers like FedEx or UPS directly. You can report the suspicious text messages to the FTC at ftc.gov forward slash complaint. State legislators are calling for Governor Gavin Newsom to reopen theme parks in California. Theme parks would include Disneyland, Universal Studios Hollywood, Knott's Berry Farm, SeaWorld San Diego, Six Flags Magic Mountain, and Legoland California. The legislators feel with indoor facilities already operating safely, theme parks could as well. Governor Newsom is expected to issue guidelines on the request soon. LA Comic Con organizers are saying they're ready for an in-person event this December. The organizers feel they can run a safe show at the LA Convention Center starting December 11th through the 13th. The event will have 100% rollover or refunding of tickets if the mayor's office or LA County Health feel it is too soon for the show. 2020 will mark the 10th year of this international comic book event. This is Natalia Bobao for the LA City View Channel 35. We're here at the Gilbert Lindsay Rec Center for the Let's Get Counted event. Why is it so important for everybody to fill out the 2020 census? We want people to get counted in the 2020 census because this is how we receive funding for programs and housing, transportation, health care, in education with programs like the free breakfast and lunch programs, special education programs, uh, Pell Grants for college students, uh, Section 8 housing. So many programs that uh, we as Angelinos benefit from directly and gives us a good quality of life. And more than that, we want to make sure that Los Angeles gets the representation it deserves in Washington, D.C. And this all depends on the census count. And so what are the initiatives or projects that we can expect to see, specifically um, at District 9? So District 9 obviously uses a lot of the federal funding for transportation projects, fixing our roads. We use money to build new parks, as well as creating new programs for seniors and kids. 
I think it's important to try and debunk some of the myths around the census 2020 form. I believe some people are a little on the fence about filling out. This information is not going to be shared with any other organization. It's just for counting purposes. That's absolutely right. The census is completely confidential and secure. It's protected by law. And so when you respond to the census, that information is kept private and confidential for 72 years. It's not shared with any other government agency, including law enforcement. They keep that information locked away with lock and key and make sure that your information is kept safe. So now uh, some final words of encouragement to people who are still a little bit on the fence about completing the 2020 census. Mariah? Definitely utilize the census as one of the ways to improve our community, um, just improve our overall society for all. So definitely take the time to do it. Um, your vote and your voice counts. There are a handful of institutions that Angelinos can point to as the workhorse of charity and giving for Los Angeles. One such organization is the Midnight Mission, and for 19 years that mission has been made possible largely by their annual fundraiser, the Golden Heart Awards. However, like most things, the Midnight Mission's big charity event is going to look a little different this year. We talk with the mission's own Georgia Berkovich to tell us what to expect this year. The Midnight Mission was founded in 1914 by a lay minister who used to gather up the homeless people at night. He was a produce man during the day and he would gather up the homeless people in the community with the promise of a meal. Our three locations, we have over 100 employees, but we really rely on volunteers. We have about 18,000 volunteers who come through and help us each year. Midnight Mission is congregate living, which are the most vulnerable places for COVID. Strange fact that you may not know is the amount of people in Skid Row who have contracted COVID is very low. We've had to make a lot of adjustments. There's been a lot of changes. This is unchartered territory and we have daily meetings to talk about the, the most recent updates. What's going on? Where do we need to adjust? We used to have our community come in for a sit down meal three times a day. Now our meals are all takeout. And so we, we've got to create these meals. So we have volunteers helping with that. The Golden Heart Awards is our big gala. It's our biggest fundraising event of the year. And it's one of my favorites because it's where we get to honor somebody who's helped us. It's a big thank you night for us. And with the pandemic, we knew we would not be able to hold it live. And we did our golf tournament, which is held every June, the Smokey Robinson Annual Golf Tournament. We did that virtually. But with the success of that event, we were trying to reimagine what the gala would be. And so we're doing the Banquet of Hope, which is a month long event uh, where sponsors can really adopt a meal. For Banquet of Hope, our fundraising goal is 400,000. It's a big part of our annual budget. Our budget goes to pay for our life saving and life changing programs. To find out more about the Midnight Mission, you can go to our website, which is midnightmission.org. Once we can have in-person events and volunteers, there's also information how you can get involved. MTO School of Islamic Sufism in Reseda has a really great habit of celebrating their holidays by giving back to their community. In May of this year, they spend Ramadan manning a care package drive through for first responders. Well, the last two days of September are National Love People Day. And this holiday was no exception. True to form, the school was being of service to its community. Take a look. We have a uh, drive-up event. It's a two-day event for the community. It's a COVID-19 testing. Um, and so we've opened our doors for our facility to uh, provide the service for the community. Since uh, April, actually, we've been very involved in our uh, COVID-19 relief efforts. So we've been making PPEs. Volunteers have been making PPEs, uh, donating them to uh, hospitals, to medical centers, to uh, homeless shelters, and so forth. 
And then in addition, we've been also providing COVID-19 testing. You just don't know nowadays. And to get tested, a lot of people are doing it because of flu season coming up. We are all just humans and that all of us are connected by that one identity is why it's so important for us to put on this event today because that's exactly what we are. We're all just individuals on this path of life and um, when groups of our community are heavily affected by COVID-19, we have to do what we can in order to help who we can. Our school really incorporates different practices such as lectures, um, mindfulness, prayers, and many other components that allow students to be in this uh, journey of self-knowledge. If you can see it, you can achieve it. That is essentially the power of art. Images have power and can be empowering. That's the idea behind a new mural at Utah Street School. Channel 35 was there for the unveiling of a new public work meant to inspire pride and motivate aspirations. This story is great. Take a look. We really come together to see how we could help our communities, just even in, in a mural like this, where you know it's going to provide inspiration and hope in very difficult times. It does leave an impression, especially if you come to school every day. Something seeps in. So it was about getting out that message. And so when we started to talk, all these things started to come out that ended up becoming part of this mural. Those things included informing the children some of the history of Boyle Heights, in particular the diversity of Boyle Heights and then from there just sort of empowering them, giving a message that is encouraging and motivating. The notion of going on from here and doing bigger things. We wanted the children to see themselves, what we aspire for them to be. You know, how we represent each other. Seeing brown people actually in a college outfit, I think is important for them. And definitely as an educator, we try to uplift the community. And we also want to ensure that they're inspired every day that they come into the school. We work closely with organizations like the YMCA on a variety of projects. And so when they came to us with this great opportunity, we helped facilitate the project to make it happen for our community. This community is just so rich in, in culture and it's a vibrant community. So for us to be able to, to bring a mural that's also vibrant but also empowering for, for our students and our, our future generations really means the world to me to know that this is going to be a legacy piece that's going to be here for, for decades to come. Here in Los Angeles, Columbus Day has changed to Indigenous Peoples Day. Why was that important for you to put into place? So in 2015, I introduced the initiative to replace Columbus Day from the city's administrative code with Indigenous Peoples Day. And after a two-year journey, uh, we were able to do that and adopt uh, the official law in 2017 and then celebrate it for the very first time in Los Angeles in 2018. For some very sad reasons, obviously, because of COVID and because of the social injustice that we have all witnessed recently, probably energized people's verve to get going with this mindset. The awareness of genocide, slavery, racial inequality, uh, it, structural inequities, just took a quantum leap forward after the murder of George Floyd. Uh, and the whole Native American cause uh, is, is part of that zeitgeist. Now, we were able to remove the Columbus statue and that was on county property at uh, Grand Park. And that was a struggle. The populations just are just starting to tear these statues down themselves because of what they represent. We need uh, an official way to deal with issues like this, which is why I've introduced a resolution that will become a city ordinance on how to actually recognize historical figures, monuments, uh, and honorifics across the city of Los Angeles so that we can deal with some of these uh, negative symbols of oppression. Real change, real policy change is important. Public safety reform, all important things, but symbolism is very important as well. That can lead to a larger conversation about how we make 
society more fair and equitable for everyone. And what are you going to do to celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day? You know, the first Indigenous Peoples Day at the steps of City Hall was historic. We had Red Bone and we had the Black Eyed Peas and uh, other famous musical groups. And we repeated that last year as well. So we're working with, closely with the City, County, Native American, Indian Commission uh, on a virtual platform of celebrations. But we're gonna, we're gonna shift on IPD toward advocacy. Uh, and while we celebrate what it is to be of indigenous and Native American heritage at the same time. Watch an empowering East LA Film Festival. The LA Public Library has music from Peru for you. Or visit a virtual Dia de los Muertos exhibit. All this up next on Virtual Things to Do. Self-Help Graphics and Art is proud to present its 47th annual Dia de los Muertos season. Self-Help Graphics and Art has produced one of the most renowned Dia de los Muertos cultural events in Los Angeles, noted as one of the oldest Day of the Dead public commemorations in the nation. This year's 47th annual celebration will be held virtually on SHG's YouTube channel. Live performances will be curated by the Paramount. Due to the pandemic, the Dia de los Muertos celebration is part of a month-long season of virtual programs and workshops, beginning with the opening of the Ofrendas 2020 exhibition on Thursday, October 8th, and culminating with the Dia de los Muertos celebration. Tune in to the Dia de los Muertos celebration, October 8th through November 20th. For details, visit selfhelpgraphics.com forward slash Dia de los Muertos. Los Angeles Public Library brings you another fine performance from the artist series, LA Made. Inca presents exciting and colorful introduction to the music of Peru. This performance will be featuring songs and rhythms from Inca, Sriolo, and Afro-Peruvian extraction on ethnic woodwinds, strings, and percussion instruments. This LA Made program is part of the pre-festival programming for LA Libros Fest. It's cultural enrichment for the whole family. Enjoy Inca, music from Peru, streaming live on Facebook and YouTube, beginning October 9th. For more information, visit LAPL.org. The East Los Angeles Society of Film and Arts presents the 13th annual East LA Film Festival. This year's theme will be Storytelling for Empowerment. Explore the Telesofa YouTube channel and discover imaginative film works from the next generation of young filmmakers. Enjoy more than a dozen short films virtually. For more information on the 13th annual East LA Film Festival, visit their website at telasofa.org. And that's a look at some virtual things to do. That's it for this edition. I'm Natalia Bilbao. From all of us here at LA This Week, thank you so much for joining us. A reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time for more LA This Week.